You advocate playing a trump card against the Soviet Union of a nuclear arms race and insisting upon nuclear superiority by our own nation as a predication for negotiation in the future. We must have a consistent foreign policy, a strong America, and a strong economy. And then as we build up our national security to restore our margin of safety, we at the same time try to restrain the Soviet buildup, which has been going forward at a rapid pace. The adversarial relationship between ourselves and the Soviet Union is extremely dangerous and belligerent in its tone. In this election especially, what was both the tone and the substance humanity was asking of its leaders, showing them the way? Can we imagine the bravery and personal cost? The people's tone leading up to this was consistently derided and marginalized by the then Governor Reagan. negotiations on their terms because Mr. Carter had canceled the B-1 bomber, delayed the MX, delayed the Trident submarine, delayed the cruise missile, shut down the missile man, the three, the Minuteman uh, missile production line, and whatever other things that, that might have been done. The Soviet Union sat at the table knowing that we had gone forward with unilateral consider or, uh, concessions without any reciprocation from them whatsoever. There is a disturbing pattern in the attitude of Governor Reagan. He has never supported any of those arms control agreements. The limited test ban, SALT-1, the uh, anti-ballistic missile treaty, nor the Vladivostok treaty. When a man who hopes to be president says, take this treaty, discard it, do not vote, do not debate, that is a very dangerous and disturbing thing. Sunrise on Earth. Morning in America was Governor Reagan's campaign slogan. He won handily, and indeed, President Carter's direction was reversed. Here's the dawn America got. Preserving the peace requires more than wishful thinking and vague good intentions. To continue the strategic modernization program, which I announced in October of 1981, the need remains for improvements in the command, control, and communications of our strategic forces and continuation of our bomber, submarine, and cruise missile program. We should immediately proceed to develop and produce the Peacekeeper missile and deploy 100 in existing Minuteman silos and to move to a more stable ICBM structure. We can no longer afford to delay. The time to act is now. Reagan took the presidency, and for the next several years, both our bravado and our nuclear weapons producers would get a green light until someone very unique arrives, turning the entire game plan on its head, Mikhail Gorbachev. It's fair to say there was genuine chemistry between these two, and despite surprising the hawks of both countries, and at least for the moment, buoyantly heartening citizens of the world, President Reagan's personal heart and mind began to open to new possibilities, and would agree with Gorbachev that abolition of these weapons could be in their grasp. Mikhail Gorbachev credited and thanked those who touched and influenced him, acknowledging publicly all the movements and those who sacrificed, who stood up to stop this madness. We'll return to these two soon. Gorbachev was not impressed with our missiles, with a Reagan administration who only viewed protests as weakness and somehow anti-American. Let's take in the recognition Gorbachev gave to what influenced him the most. This human, this rare world leader, 
as he gave genuine gratitude to those around the world who stood up and sacrificed for good reason. Well over a million people in this one city on this one day. No matter how forgotten, minuscule or unthanked one's efforts and life seems, the great arc of human history is indebted to you and all those he praised. Thank you. And let us remember again these two who knew well this was the way forward. And another who was also interrupted as he was laying the groundwork needed so such weapons would never be necessary, facilitating enemies into allies. Always seeking to build friendships with other nations, large and small, for powerful countries to adopt a principle of preventive war may well set an example that can have catastrophic consequences. There are others who have acted with great personal courage. None has provided more vivid reminders of the dangers. I come knowing that our aspirations and goals are one. I found you a man of courage and vision. You listen only to the dictates of your conscience. My dear friend, President Carter. Close friends, Anwar Sadat, and Yitzhak Rabin, who gave their lives for the cause of peace. As a citizen of a troubled world, who finds hope in a growing consensus that the generally accepted goals of society are peace, freedom, human rights, environmental quality, the alleviation of suffering, and the rule of law. Let us have three of us together. Very good. I'm so proud of both of you. God bless you both. Thank you, Mr. President. All of us. Gorbachev courageously returns us to trust building. The winter of our discontent may one day come to an end. The process, now underway all over the world, of rethinking the realities of the nuclear and space age. It must now be clear to all that the problems of today's world will not be solved through old approaches. The goal we are setting today is to build a nuclear-free world. The road leading to it is difficult and thorny, but with new thinking, it is attainable. So I address these words of congratulation to the Soviet and American people. I want to emphasize that this is the fruit of the efforts not only of us both, but also all public movements whose effort and contribution rightfully made them party to this historic event. The culminating hope was tragically dashed when hardliners on both sides entrenched positions on Star Wars SDI, finding another perfect excuse to push the business of proliferation. I made it clear that our SDI program will continue and that when we have a defense ready to deploy, we will do so. I refuse Soviet demands that we trade away SDI. Your overwhelming support made it clear to the Soviet leaders that the American people prefer no deal to a bad deal and will back their president on matters of national security. Oh, oh, oh.